HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, I caught up with Yogurt Beach owner Chris Cooney. We'll tell you all about the Flag for Hope program. Hundreds of motorcyclists throughout New England took part in Heather's Ride. And Ashland Legion Baseball is trying to get a streak going as we near playoff time. But first, the Chamber of Commerce hosted their annual downtown celebration, and this year it took place at Yogurt Beach. Here is a look at the ceremony. Town officials, local business leaders, and government officials, along with the Chamber of Commerce, gathered at Yogurt Beach to welcome the frozen yogurt shop to downtown Hopkinton. One, two, three. Coming to town, uh, we have just a little uh, thank recognition from the chamber. Thank you to the Cooney family for investing in our community and bringing great tasting treats to the town. Welcome to Hopkinsville. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To be here um, to welcome this wonderful, tasty new uh, eating option to Hopkinton. I have to say, word is traveling fast. And uh, I was just told by a high school student that, in fact, Yogurt Beach does have the best selection of toppings anywhere in the vicinity. So uh, I suspect, probably suspect you're going to have a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks of all ages coming in. And it's just always nice to welcome a new business here to town, um, give our local folks some more options for food, delicious options for food, as well as really um, support locally owned downtown businesses, which are so important to our community and to our main street. So it's really my honor and my pleasure to um, read a citation on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And it reads, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House offers its sincerest congratulations to Yogurt Beach and the Cooties in recognition of the joyous occasion of ribbon cutting ceremony in the community of Hockington. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and, and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given today. Uh, 2015, signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and Carol Levesque, the State Representative. So congratulations to you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, and from the Board of Selectmen, I'd just like to say thank you very much for, for investing in the downtown. This is this is just a great business to, to have right here. We needed, we absolutely needed a, a, a frozen treat shop in town. Um, and you know, this is this is part of that, that whole visioning that we were working on for the last year. This is you know the part of the downtown revitalization. I'd also like to thank the Major family for, for investing for doubling down on their investment, working next door and then and then buying this building that was that was really falling into disre disrepair and really turning it into a jewel for the downtown. You know, and this is and also I want to you know also have the uh, um, town hall double down also in, in helping small businesses by holding their hands, you know, and, and, and getting through some of the red tape and some of the bylaws that are in place that can sometimes slow down small businesses. And so that you're just a, a you know, a, a, a light that, uh, that we just want to continue to keep the downtown growing and prospering. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. The planning board, welcome to downtown. Uh, as many people know, planning board permit was probably the, the biggest hurdle to getting the seating here in this this historic building had you no know, parking and has actually has one handicap spot. We need another up. dozen. And to be <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> well I want to talk a little bit about parking because it is a key thing. When we did a parking study a few years ago, downtown Hopkinton really didn't have a, a parking problem except for three entities Town Hall, the library, and center school didn't have enough parking, but the rest of the spots there was enough to take care of it all. And we changed our bylaws to allow only half the number of parking spots 
as what the square footage or the number of uh, tables, chairs, uh, seats in a restaurant would, would require. And with Greg's uh, new building he's starting on, you know, next door, with this building, we're starting to use up some of our slack on the parking. And we're right now just about ready to go forward and we're on the list for redoing the downtown corridor, the road work, which we lose another 20 spots out on the street. So I'm using this as an opportunity to suggest to do our selectmen that it's time to get some off-street parking so that businesses can come here. We, we don't want to be limited by the amount of seats are. People will vote not by their seat, that they'll vote by their feet or vote by not having a spot by not coming. We've got to fix this problem to help our local businesses. And it's time to, to, to do that at this point. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. welcome. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. First of all, um, I can say, looking out at the crowd and seeing a lot of awesome people here, I really appreciate everybody coming and taking a few minutes out of your busy schedules. Um, number two, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and, and Tim as well and uh, Ron for helping me out and putting this together. It's very nice of you to do. Thank you. Uh, also, I had written an open letter to, the, to Norman, town manager as it relates to the experience that we went through from the planning board to the water department and the uh, board of health department and so on and so forth. And I can honestly say, you hear a lot of negative things and obstacles people have to go through and the difficulty it has been for certain businesses. I can tell you with all sincerity that it was, wasn't simple, but it was smooth. We ran into hurdles. They helped us get over hurdles. We had a couple obstacles to do with uh, a grease trap back here that I won't get into details, but they, they gave us a lot of suggestions of how to get through it, as opposed to saying, hey, it's yours, good luck, take it easy. It was pretty neat, which I commend the town for doing that. Uh, lastly, I'd like to say we've been here for 22 years, and we had a hiatus a couple years ago, um, and went down to Memphis for two years. In, my kids weren't real happy about it, but uh, we went for two years and come back, and, and I will say that, and I was saying it to a, a couple of gentlemen here earlier, you don't realize what you have until you leave it. And we left it for two years, and we came back for a reason, because we love Hopkinton, we love the school system, we love the people. It's very unique here that for a lot of you guys that may have been living here for a couple decades or a decade and haven't left and come back, I can tell you that it's a pretty neat place and we're very lucky to have it. And I just want to make that comment that you don't hear positive things and people need to hear that once in a while. And thanks for everybody coming. I appreciate it. For all the happenings with the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce, be sure to head over to hopchamber.com on your internet browser. After being welcomed to town, Yogurt Beach owner Chris Cooney was kind enough to speak with HCAM News. After Yogurt Beach was welcomed to town by the Chamber of Commerce and local business and government leaders, owner Chris Cooney talked to HCAM News about opening up in downtown Hopkinton. We've been residents for 22 years here, so we're very familiar with the area and the community and the families and kids. And um, we were introduced to this concept uh, a couple years ago, we opened one, uh, myself and my partners, down in Plainville, down 495. And we just thought it would be a really cool fit for Hopkinton. Uh, it's been very well received. The people of Hopkinton have been awesome. Um, we're, we're very excited about it and we really appreciate all the support that we've been getting. My family loves ice cream. We always shoot out as a family and used to go to Yeoman's or DQ or somewhere in the area. And uh, we just thought it would be a really cool idea to have something downtown for the Hopkinton people as well as Ashland and Holliston and Southboro and kind of some of the people on the outskirts we could, we could draw in. They wouldn't have to drive as far and it's just so much easier. Uh, and it's just the convenience of it's really cool as well. Chris said he is thrilled at the reception his frozen yogurt shop has received so far. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually been, again, it's been so well received. It's, it's, I'll give you an example. The second day we were open was Friday, which was the last day of school, and kids got out early. And 
I think on that day for six or seven hours straight, we were constantly pumping in product into the machines and people were going sideways trying to get up to the cashier to pay. And so it's, it's again, it's been well received and it's just been crazy, but you know, crazy is a good thing. So we're, we're very happy about it. Chris was also very happy about how easy it has been to work with the town. I felt that was important to let everybody know that and I also uh, wrote an open letter to Norman, the town manager, to let him know that. And I can tell you that, you know, walking into this, I didn't really know what to expect because we hadn't opened a retail shop or anything like that here in Hopkinton, but, you know, from the DPW Water Department, Planning Department, Board of Health, uh, Building Department, uh, and everybody in between, they have been awesome. They've helped us with any problems we might have had. We've had a couple obstacles we had to get over, and as opposed to them pushing it off, saying, hey, Chris, it's your problem, good luck. They've offered suggestions and really held our hand and, and guided us along the way. And I don't think a lot of people realize that there's a lot of positive going on and we should be proud that we have groups like this within Hopkinton that are passionate enough to actually want to do the right thing and do good things for the town. And that was really refreshing for me. And I, I thought everybody should know that in the ceremony we had earlier. And I'm very happy that you asked me that question as well. Rick and Dick Hoyt were back in town recently. The Hoyts were joined by some familiar faces in Hopkinton to leave their mark on the Flag for Hope. Flag for Hope is described as a social movement of people all across America to come together and recognize our shared humanity and to unite in harmony. About 5,000 people throughout the country will leave their mark on the canvas and be a part of designing the Flag for Hope. Artist Marcos Antonio plans to donate the global canvas to a museum as his gift for future generations. He is also creating a video and photo database of each participant. Flag for Hope recently stopped at the Center School in Hopkinton, in which a number of police and firemen left their impression. Rick and Dick Hoyt were also in attendance to leave their mark, and as some refer to as Mr. Hopkinton, U.S. Marine Bob Lavoy left his print on the Flag for Hope. Uh, veteran of the Marines, he writes behind the scenes type of stuff. I'll probably pay for this later. But that's okay. Um, Bob's known as Mr. Hopkinton, uh, was referred to me by, <laughs> by the uh, chief of the fire department. So we could just take a second to give Bob a round of applause for his service. For more information, check out flagforhope.com. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Ashland Legion Baseball is trying to make a postseason push, and motorcyclists throughout the area took part in Heather's Ride. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H-Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend, one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H-Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. On July 9th, motorcyclists throughout New England met at many designated locations. The former Colella's parking lot was one of the many locations where riders got together to head to the Laconia Harley-Davidson in Meredith, New Hampshire for Heather's Ride. Local motorcyclists, which included many members of fire departments throughout the area, met in the former Colella's parking lot to head to Murdith, New Hampshire for the 6th annual Heatherland Seabert Memorial Ride. Funds raised from the ride go to the Heather Seabert Patient Support Fund at the Boston Children's Hospital. So we're doing a ride for, it's called Heather's Ride. 
It's for one of the firefighters' stepdaughter that passed away approximately six years ago. So he started this ride up in New Hampshire, and we started out with just a handful of bikes, 10 or 15 bikes, leaving here to ride up to New Hampshire to do a charity ride on Saturday, and it's morphed into over 20 bikes easily. And we, we would have had 40 bikes, but we had to split it up. So we're all from Hopkinton, we all know Carl, and we're more than happy to do this for him for a cause. And the money that we raise goes to Children's Hospital um, to help them out. So last, the last years we have raised in the excess of between ten dollars and $15,000 doing this charity ride. Now you so. mentioned this is uh, your sixth year doing this. Six years doing it, yep. Uh, how, how's the uh, ride? How, how long is it? Well, we do all back roads, and I've mapped it out. I've got it down to a T right now, and um, it takes us about, if we don't stop, it's a three and a half hour ride all back roads, but we ride up halfway, and we stop at a Dunkin' Donuts, and we take our time, and then after that, we end up at a, um, a, um, a barbecue place up in New Hampshire. We eat, and then we head to the hotel, and this year, actually the last couple of years, we've taken over a whole hotel they've they've literally saved all the rooms just for us so and then our hotel and then across the street now it's morphed over to there they are filled with just Heather's ride riders so we leave the Laconia Harley tomorrow morning with over a hundred bikes so it's it's a great event a lot of fun good camaraderie good friends we have a really good time you know and all the spouses now the kids have added on so they're riding now so it's worked out very well. Everybody looks forward to it. In fact, Sunday morning, we're already booking next year. So it's, it's become that much. You know, everybody's already planning for next year's ride. So, and it goes by too quick, you know. But this is the kickoff. This is how we kick the weekend off, leaving from here. For more information, you can check out heathersride.webs.com. Ashland Legion Baseball started off the season struggling. Post 77 has since been able to develop some run production, and this past week they aimed for a couple of big wins to make a playoff push. On Tuesday, July 7th, 3 and 6 Ashland Legion took on 1 and 6 Bill Ricca. Jake Obid got the start for Ashland. Top of the first, two on, one out, Justin Burek at the plate for Bill Ricca. Someone already getting warm for Ashland, just in case Obid continues to struggle. On the ground, right side, past the dive of Wolf. One run is in, the second run being waved around. It, the ball just being picked up over in right field, and two runs score. It's a two RBI single for Justin Burek. Greg Holler helped post 77 respond on the bottom of the first. Takes a look at third and deals. And this is up the left side. Slow roller on the grass. Throw to first. And they do get the runner going to first, but the run does score. Top of the third with two outs. David Lindsay adds security for Bill Ricca. And this is hit into left field. That'll drop down. Runner being waved around. The throw in, not in time, and another Bill Ricca run scores. Bottom of the fourth, Ashland gets within one as Andrew Kime takes advantage of an error. Eric deals. Kime crushes this into right field. That drops down for a hit, an absolute rope. Rounding first, it'll roll all the way back to the wall. Kime will stop at second with the stand-up double. Now he's going to go to third as the throw got by the cutoff man. Throw to third, is going to get away, and Kime's going to come around to score. Top of the fifth, Bill Ricca adds another run. Lineup and the pitch. On the ground, third base side, and it's past the dive of Krupe and Messier, one run in. The throw in is going to be in time to get the second runner. A 
well-needed good defensive play by Greg Holler. So Anthony Nelson scores on the RBI single by David Lindsay. Bill Ricca never looks back, taking down Ashland 5-2. Justin Burek was the winning pitcher, Jake Obid the loss. For Bill Ricca, Justin Burek went 3-4 for four with two RBIs. Anthony Nelson went 3-4 for four with a double, two runs, and an RBI. The next day, Ashland had a chance to get back on the winning track as they took on Tingsboro. Nick Burns on the mound for Ashland. Things started off a little rocky, top of the first, one on, two outs. Jacob Barnes at the plate for Tingsboro. Burns delivers, and this is a liner in a left field. That'll drop in for a hit. Runner being waved around third as Greg Holler struggles with it. One run is in, the throw to second is not in time. Post 77 responded in the bottom of the third, trailing one to nothing. Brendan Thurber at the plate, two on, one out. Samuel deals. And this is a liner in the right center. That'll drop down. One run in a score. A second run being waved around. The throw in is cut off, and it's 2-1 post-77. A two RBI single for Brendan Thurber. Post-77 added another run in the bottom of the fourth. One on, two outs. Jeff Haller at the plate. Sandville awaits the sign and deals. And this takes a couple hops on the infield grass, bobbled by the third baseman, Eric Maxfield, and it's 3-1 post-77. Nick Burns coming around to score. Another error for Kingsboro. Ashland got the well-needed 3-1 win to improve to 4-7. and seven. Ashland defeats Tingsboro 3-1. Nick Burns gets the win, Sean Sandville the loss. For Ashland, Nick Burns pitched the complete game, all seven innings, giving up six hits, one run, though was unearned, and had seven strikeouts. Brendan Thurber went one for three with two RBIs. You can catch Ashland Legion Baseball broadcasts airing on HCAM TV and also on our website, HCAM.TV. To tell you more about what you can expect coming up on the HCAM channels, here's our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On a new Hopkinton coffee break on Friday, July 17th at 8 p.m., the hosts discuss the meaning of being brave and talk about summer events in town. When I think of being brave, part of it is we sometimes get stuck in our rut and we say we can only do this and we need to free ourselves with, exactly. can we do it differently? How can we do it differently? And asking right. the right questions. On Saturday, July 18th at 1.30 p.m., the Ashland Legion baseball team takes on North Chelmsford. On Monday, July 20th at 7 p.m., Kenny Seltzer performs original songs inspired by his observations and his life in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I'm looking for some color. I'm just looking for some colors in my life. And I'm not going to worry much about the days that have passed me by. On a new HCAM News Focus on Tuesday, July 21st at 7.30 p.m., author Hank Philippi Ryan gives a presentation on her latest novel, A Mystery of Foreclosures and Murder, and tells of her life as a reporter and storyteller. Do you want to have the HCAM Insider newsletter sent to you every week? If so, all you have to do is send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive the HCAM Insider, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.
sie.